This is the ultimate camera test between the Pixel 8 versus the iPhone 15. After 8 months with both of these phones and their many software updates after, I'm going to test their cameras in different scenarios, from taking pictures, videos and of course the software features to find out once and for all which has the better camera system so you can then decide which you should buy. Like I said, this is the ultimate camera test so stick around and smash that subscribe button so we can get this channel to 30,000 subs this year. Let's get into it. One of the key differences between the Pixel 8 and the iPhone 15 is their respective camera apps. They are identical on the surface in what it can do, but the Pixel 8 gives more control than the iPhone 15. For example, you can easily adjust the white balance to match the color temperature of your environment, but it might not matter to a lot of people if you're shooting outdoors most of the time, but once you step inside or when you're inside low light, adjusting the white balance is a game changer, so that is a point to the Pixel 8. Apart from that and the camera app design, taking pictures on both phones produce clear, vibrant and sharp pictures, but their computational photography or how they process pictures are very different. For one, the Pixel 8 produces more of a realistic look, you know, what you see is what you get, whereas the iPhone 15 increases the contrast and saturation. When it comes to shooting raw, the iPhone uses a new format called Heath Max or Heath Max, which essentially means you can take sharp 48 megapixel images without worrying about the storage space. It does have a slight edge over JPEGs, but the margin between them isn't so high that you should use this all the time. So it's better to just continue using live photos and adjust them as much as you want later on. The Pixel, on the other hand, has a raw format that actually takes raw pictures that aren't over sharpened and sometimes do not look like it's taken from a smartphone. For many years now, I have always said or oh, I really believe that the Pixel 8 or the Pixel phones generally take better pictures than any other phone. Macro mode is also something the iPhone 15 does not have. I mean, sure, you can move closer as much as you want, but it does not give you that same effect or feeling when you're taking a picture. With the Pixel 8, you just need to get closer to your subject and the camera automatically turns on to macro mode. Full disclosure though, I don't really use macro mode. If I'm being completely honest, I could care less, but in accordance to what I've been saying for the past couple of weeks or what I've been preaching for the last couple of weeks, having the option or having that feature is always a nice to have and that will always be a major W. Now, within portrait mode, the Pixel 8 gives more of a portrait feel than the iPhone's standard mode because it only goes as wide as 1.5x, which is closer than the iPhone 15 giving that illusion. Of course, you can just zoom in 1.5 on the iPhone if you want some similar results, but that is somewhat of a two or three step process. Either way, these two modes are very similar, but I lean towards the Pixel 8. And if we look at low light pictures, I think it was the Pixel 2 or the Pixel 3 that pioneered this feature. And I still believe that Google are kind of the best at it at the moment. The Pixel provides a more neutral and consistent color with each image that is taking. And like I said, the ability to control the color temperature in different lighting conditions is a major W and that shows in low light pictures. So when I was testing out these cameras for this video, just to make sure that I got everything right, I realized the iPhone 15 is severely lacking in some basic features. Now, if we go outside for a bit, we can test out the action pan and long exposure feature on the iPhone 15. So if I take a picture of the bus or a car passing by and carefully follow it with my hands, the idea here is that the camera is focused on the subject while the background will be blurred. With the Pixels and its software, it automatically achieves this for you without having to do anything. On the iPhone 15 and using live photos, you can then change it to have a long exposure. And as you can see, it does not really give that same effect as the Pixel 8, which is obviously the clear winner. I love this little niche feature because to achieve anything like this on a mirrorless camera, you need an ND filter, a tripod, a shutter speed to about 1 to 30 seconds, and a lot of patience depending on what you're shooting. Okay, let's talk about the selfie camera. Looking at this side by side, Google uses its software to process the picture to what it should be. I think the Pixel 8 is infinitely better than the iPhone 15 when it comes to selfie cameras because it uses real tone to get my exact skin tone, while the iPhone 15, the 15 Pro, even the 15 Pro Max 
till this day makes me look darker than I already am. I'm not really sure why. Both phones also switch to different fields of view. I usually use a 1X if I'm by myself, but I go wider if I have a group of people with me. Stabilization is good on both cameras if you move around. And speaking of stabilization, the video capabilities of the selfie camera is where Google sort of disappointed me in my opinion. On the iPhone 15, I look great. The colors are even with great dynamic range. And on the Pixel 8, I'm sort of discolored. It also looks grainy at the same time, even in post-production. Keep this in mind if you really want to take a lot of videos with your front-facing camera. This is the sound quality on the iPhone 15, and this is the sound quality on the Google Pixel 8. Um, of course, microphone quality differs a lot of the time. Um, the Pixel 8 has the audio enhancement feature that is on, which more or less isolates my voice, but at the same time, it feels very robotic in my opinion. It's not exactly natural, but I guess that's the point. Remember when I said the Pixel 8 uses a lot of software for its images and video? It also has a few more AI features that are more or less controversial, so to speak. And Best Take is one of those controversial features on the Pixel 8. Essentially, this feature works if you have taken many pictures, say six to 10 pictures at the same time. And based on those pictures, your phone identifies each person and gives you the ability to change their different facial expressions. So if someone's eyes are closed within that image, it can change it to something else that you've taken after that one. Now, I don't know, it made me uncomfortable the first few times I used it because it's not exactly real, if that makes sense, but it, it has come in handy sometimes. Also, it has a magic editor feature that allows you to edit your pictures in many different ways. Think of it as having Photoshop, but on your phone. The problem here is Magic Editor is very slow to process because it uses the cloud to embed these changes. Now, I'm not really a fan of it, to be honest. If I really wanted to alter anything in my pictures, I would just open Adobe Photoshop or even Canva for that matter. On the iPhone 15, it does not really have any AI features or any software features that enhances the camera. However, I do expect Apple to change this with the next coming iPhone. All right, the video camera is where things get very interesting. For many years now, people have said the iPhones are the king of smartphone video. So let's test both of them out side by side and decide. This is the standard 1X on both phones with normal stabilization. Okay, let's try action mode right now on the iPhone and locked mode on the Pixel 8. Different names, same function. You notice here that the iPhone resolution has reduced to 2.8K as opposed to 4K, while the Pixel 8 zoomed into 2X, but the 4K resolution is retained. Now, while the Pixel 8 does a good job in terms of stabilization, I really and 100% believe the iPhone 15 is still the better video shooter. The Pixel does a good job in terms of lighting and color balance and all that good stuff, but overall, I think the iPhone 15 is just my preferred choice or the preferred choice. And it's great if you want to buy this strictly for creating content. But like I always say, the camera is a very divisive and subjective topic amongst a lot of people. But from my point of view, the Pixel, whether it be the Pixel 8 or the Pixel 8 Pro, is the best for taking images, macro mode, and of course the portrait mode as well. You can also add the extra AI features like Magic Editor and Best Take. Whereas the iPhone 15 is better if you want to up your selfie game, as well as having a great video camera on your phone. But this is just one man's opinion, and I'd like to hear yours. Which phone do you think has the better camera? Comment down below and let me know. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel as I want to get to 30,000 subs at the end of the year. And if you want to see my six month review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, click here or click here. Click one of these places, I'm not really sure. And I'll see you guys there.